Sure. We uh, targeted a population of head and neck cancer patients uh, really without any therapeutic options that are effective clinically. This is a group of patients that uh, progress rapidly uh, after treatment with cisplatin. Uh, they progress uh, or recur basically within six months of uh, cisplatin therapy, that being the most effective chemo uh, therapy available in head and neck cancer. So once that occurs, uh, they progress rapidly and they really don't have any other uh, effective therapeutic options. Taking a population like that with a big clinical unmet need, we chose to uh, ask the question whether immunotherapy uh, could be utilized uh, in this population uh, where traditional chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and other approaches had, had not worked. When we designed this study, uh, it was um, designed as a randomized phase three global comparative study, really to answer the question definitively with this uh, platinum refractory population. And so the uh, alternative therapies besides cisplatin, since they had already received that, uh, were investigators' choice. And we selected the three most common, that being docetaxel, methotrexate, which had been used for decades, or cetuximab, which was FDA approved uh, in the second line for head and neck cancer uh, around five or six years ago. Uh, and so the invest investigator's choice was used as a single agent, not as a combination, and compared with anti-PD-1 uh, antibody called nivolumab. At the AACR meeting uh, and further uh, evaluations of that will be presented uh, here at ASCO, uh, we presented the primary endpoint. Uh, and I think it's important with immunotherapies that we don't get focused a, as heavily on progression or response rate, uh, which are uh, endpoints that we will present at ASCO. We think overall survival is really the crucial endpoint. And the, uh, this was the primary endpoint to the study because uh, immunotherapy responses sometimes can be atypical. And so response rate or progression-free survival may not, for immunotherapies, always uh, preview what the true overall survival will be. And so uh, the overall survival uh, endpoint was met during a pre-planned uh, interim analysis, uh, and it was double, uh, more than double uh, in the nivolumab-treated patients. 36% were alive at one year versus less than 17% in the investigator's choice arm. Uh, interestingly, uh, the, the entire uh, unfractionated cohort had a hazard ratio of 0.7, so a 30% uh, reduction in risk of death uh, at one year. And um, when we subset, we broke down uh, subsets uh, of uh, the population based on HPV status, since human papillomavirus causes a portion of head and neck cancers, <clears throat> and we had about 25% in the Checkmate 141 that were HPV positive, the overall survival was even better uh, in that population with a hazard ratio of 0.55. Uh, for HPV positive patients versus HPV negative. We also broke uh, overall survival down based on the expression of the ligand for PD-1. It's called PDL1. And other studies have suggested that PDL1 positive uh, tumors that were PDL1 positive would be more likely to respond and benefit from anti PD-1 therapy. And we saw similarly that with a threshold of 1% expression, that those who had a PDL1 above 1%. Uh, had uh, a better survival, again with the hazard ratio around 0.5 to 0.55, depending on when the th whether the threshold was 1 or 5 or 10 percent. And so using that 1 percent threshold, overall survival was, was much better. Now interestingly, overall survival still favored nivolumab, even in the patients who were pdl one negative. That hazard ratio was 0.89, so not as strong of an effect or not as strong a benefit for nivolumab in the pdl one negatives. Uh, but actually still uh, favored nivolumab. So the investigator's choice really didn't offer uh, any benefit whether PDL1 was present or absent, but clearly better overall survival than the PDL1 positives. Uh, you bring up the treatment related adverse events, and we obviously very carefully analyzed that. Um, the, the uh, grade three and four in particular uh, were much lower in the nivolumab treated patients, about 13% versus 35% in the investigator's choice uh, group. Um, uh, and additionally, when we looked at the adverse events in the nivolumab arm, 
There were no new signals. There was no uh, unexpected toxicities. Uh, we saw some of the endocrinopathies that have been seen in other uh, uh, populations like lung cancer that may be similar to head and neck, more so perhaps than melanoma. Uh, and we didn't see any unusual uh, autoimmune sequela. And so what we saw is that an agent can double the one-year survival, overall survival, with about one-third the rate of grade three adverse events. And in a population with rapid progression, this was a nice combination and we think creates a new standard of care option for, for uh, plat platinum refractory head and neck cancer. The take-home messages from uh, the Checkmate 141 study are, number one, um, head and neck cancer uh, is a immunogenic or immune immunotherapy responsive disease. And so uh, anti-PD-1 really serves as not only a new standard of care option for a very rapidly progressing uh, po patient population, but we should recognize that most of the patients progressed and didn't benefit. And so uh, in reality, Nivolumab should only, just, uh, should only be a platform for further combinations and enhancements to take what is still promising data but really improve it. And so uh, as an immunogenic cancer, we have at least the first glimpse of the future for immunotherapy. Uh, I think we also learned that landmark analyses for immunotherapies such as one-year survival uh, and so on are probably more useful overall survival, particularly when we see that the agents are not highly toxic, that they're very well tolerated. Uh, and so looking at uh, progression or response rates, ultimately we want to see it translate into overall survival. And so immunotherapy trials should have overall survival endpoints uh, since it's the highest quality data that you can get from a randomized phase three trial.